Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about Sorcerer.io. It was actually something a friend of mine introduced me to, and I thought it was pretty cool a while back, and I haven't had a chance to make a video about it. But basically what it is, is it essentially creates a GUI of your GitHub experience, and then lays it out cleanly and nicely to, so that you can showcase your top skills, your, you know, what technologies you're using, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at mine, and I uh, hope you check it out. So one thing to keep in mind is that if you use GitHub or GitLab, uh, that it'll essentially give you access to either. And oh my god, authentication, two-factor. Why do you do this to me, Google or GitHub? This always pisses me off, man. Not that there's anything inherently wrong with two-factor authentication. All right, there we go. So I've actually already signed in. Uh, I did it on my phone. but so, so it'll take a second for it to upload because it goes through it. And then you can always refresh to do an update. And it'll go and re-update it. Cool thing about this is that uh, my friend who did this, uh, she... It was basically on her, um, what do you call it, uh, her boot camp that introduced her to it. And they use it as like a way to put on your portfolio. Um, my understanding is you're only your public repos. So, um, you know, I have about 50 repos, I think, and only about 35 of them are public. Um, and, uh, you know, you can link, you can share it, share it here and whatnot. Um, or get the HTML if you want to use it. But you can scroll down and see a breakdown of, you know, TypeScript, JavaScript, HTML. Like, I, I'm clearly doing a lot of front end here <laughs> at the end of the day. And then Angular. Um, I was a little surprised to see about these other ones just because I don't use these. But you can see um, LOC, I'm guessing, is lines of code. Uh, 9,000 lines of code there versus 408. So they just filled in some stuff. Um, utilities. Karma unit testing, DevOps, engineering tools. What else we got? Storage, uh, internet. So fun facts. I'm most productive during the daytime. Dope. I'm most productive on Sundays. That makes a lot of sense. I work on the weekends <laughs> on a lot of projects. Um, I've used Angular for three years, HTML for three years, CSS for two years, JavaScript for three years. I'm a top Angular developer. I ranked higher than 86% of users. I prefer spaces for indentation. All right. And I prefer camel case for naming variables. Well, I am doing a lot of JavaScript and TypeScript. So, um, as well as uh, a breakdown timeline. You can also write some stuff on here and do some work experience. So, cool thing about this also, other than I just like, I think stuff like this is dope, is that um, at the end of the day, I believe you can also um, share your profile here so that people can reach out to you. Like if you go to uh, talent, right, you can put in your name and people can see through the site like, oh, hey, what jobs you're a good fit for. So you can check that out. But I always find things like this kind of kind of neat. Um, it's a it's something that you could make yourself stand out a little bit. Um, it's kind of fun as well, where instead of you being like, oh, yeah, I have X amount of Z, X, Y and Z. You could send that to maybe a less technical recruiter and they can, you know, look at it and you can put it on your resume. You can, you can, um, you know, dive, uh, dive a little deeper on, on a side note, this is an open source project. So if you want to go to GitHub and, and look for, um, sorcerers dash IO, um, essentially substitute the dot for a dash and you'll come across it. And that's cool to me as well, where like, you have these items and I've seen similar things. I've shared similar things. Um, I shared a uh, GitHub resume generator that it was just basically what this is more or less with some cool stuff um, where at the end of the day, you, you know, generated a resume based off your GitHub. Um, kind of the, the downside to some of this is that it's all API based, right? So like that's why you have to refresh it. But, and, and, and because of that, the the private versus public repo stuff but it's it's all very dope and i i like when people make things free and available i'm a big believer of the freemium model in things um, when it comes to the software like youtube i consider it to be a freemium model right i throw something out there 
you watch it, there's ads, maybe I try to sell you one of my courses. And at the end of the day, hopefully you learn something, you benefit from it. And I benefit, right? It, it builds my brand and all this other stuff, right? Um, and, uh, you know, maybe there's money guarantee in it at the end of the day. And like, here's a great example of something that's a freemium product that's truly freemium, not like free to play. Like, <laughs> like free to play is the biggest joke in the world with like gaming and whatnot. We're like, hey, it's free to play, but after about an hour, you're probably going to hate the game so much that you'll pay $20 so that you can enjoy the full experience, right? Like, and just not that, I, so like, I don't, I don't pay for that stuff, but that's the, that's the free to play model. But with a true freemium product, like YouTube, like, um, you know, this product, it's always nice to see something where you get a, f you get full value, right? Um, and I, I think it's really important as, as software engineers to support the sort of open source model in various ways. And that doesn't mean in everything. Um, I think generally speaking, if you put a lot of hard work into something that you deserve the reward, right? I, I build courses and I sell them for dollar amounts, usually $10, $20, whatever it is. But it is always cool to see that there are these nice software products and projects that this definitely started out as someone's side hobby someone's side hustle this isn't like oh i'm gonna go take over the world so often i think people go and they look at they go and they they think about like oh i want to um you know i are you gonna do a startup dylan are you gonna do this are you gonna do that like this this is someone's startup right this is the idea of like hey i just wanted to build something cool and i had an idea and I hustled on it and I did X, Y, and Z. And I don't plan on being a billionaire or anything like that or, you know, trying to grow it in, in Silicon Valley to an Uber or an Airbnb or whatnot. Here's a cool little thing. Maybe you'll make some money. Probably not a ton, but you could make a full time salary off any of these and maybe hire one or two employees down the road. Who knows, man? But I always like these are the types of projects and products that I like because they provide value they're not all in your face and you know not everything has to be about taking over the world truly like if you wanted to just build something small and and dominate that little niche that to me is really interesting and can provide a lot of a lot of growth for you where why go after you know the world when maybe like why go for you know you don't go for president first you, usually you go for like city council so get yourself a city council project like this and you know turn it into a mayor or something i don't know uh, you get the analogy but i like i like this site i thought it was pretty cool and i thought it was a cool little thing and um you can get a little link to share to people as i mentioned but uh, as always guys thank you so much for watching the video don't forget to comment like subscribe share and uh, check out my courses in the description below i'll see you next time Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my latest course, the 100 Front End Interview Questions Challenge to make sure that you ace those front end interviews. Smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.